Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome into the Back to 12 podcast. I'm RC Maxfield. That is Lyle Leon. And we got a special guest today on the podcast. If you're watching the video version, Lyle, who, who hey. is this sophisticated cat? Kenzo, can you say hello, everyone? Hello, everyone. We, we were showing off the puppies before we started the podcast. So yeah. we've got the puppies and everything out of the way. He's rocking the cleanest outfit I've seen. And speaking of clean, we are going to talk about Texas Tech, hopefully wearing some clean jerseys because I heard some rumors that it might be all black crossing Ooh. my fingers. Cause those black ones are icy. Let's be real about it. Lyle. Yeah. Pretty jealous, you know, missed out on that. You know, we're, we're the old school. We're getting uh, the two jerseys, which are always fresh, but you know, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta give Cliff his credit. He started they're fresh. He did. We're, we're, we're top 10 in the country. Yeah. You, yeah. I, I feel almost kind of like, obviously not bad for you because you won a lot of football games in your college career. Um, but from a style standpoint, I feel like y'all got kind of hosed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like y'all got the have short end of the stick. Very. Have you seen those Cardinals all black? Can I say something that like might them. be a hot, hot take? I hate the helmet. You do? Oh, I hate so the helmet. The jerseys look great, but I think the helmet just, that it ruins it for me. You think so? I, I think that I think the design is good, mm -hmm. but I I really just can't get. You know how there's always that one thing in an outfit you just remember, like it's like, hey, that sure. looks really good, or that looks really bad. I am stuck on the helmet because I think it just looks bad. I think it's a bad look. That's fair. Yeah, That's just like the fair. color rush jerseys. Like some teams looked really good in those, yes. like really good, and then other teams, I don't know how their PR department literally allowed it to happen yeah you know uh, yeah unless it's i'm not gonna say that on on the pod but uh unless they weren't seeing clearly but I, I definitely have to agree with that and you know even on madden when i'm playing sometimes i like to see the color rush some of them are pretty terrible oh pretty terrible. yeah and, and as a titans fan i can admit mine is like kind of middle of the pack and every time i see it i need to go take some tylenol because instantly i need i, I have a headache um right. it's it's that fast that. Um, yeah. I will admit though, the Bengals one, the all white best uniforms in the NFL, spicy, that's spicy. Yeah. And, and it makes it better that you got a quarterback in Joe Burrow that just has a sense of fashion as well. Anyway, we digress quite a bit from what we were here to talk about, which is the sure. Texas bowl, Texas tech will face off against Ole Miss eight and four Ole Miss from the SEC. Ole Miss leads the all-time series 4-2. Last time they met, well, you know what happened. It was the first game of the year um, a few years back in 2018. And, well, it didn't end well for Texas Tech. Let's just say that. 47-27 uh, uh, going towards the Ole Miss Rebels. Ole Miss is actually favored in this one at minus three and a half. But, Lyle, the thing is that I was really shocked about, and I try and pay attention to these teams that I think are quite a bit of fun. And I think Lane Kiffin teams are usually fun, you know. Um, right. but when I think of Lane Kiffin and tell me if I'm wrong on this front, I think of pass happy. Like, that's what I think about, like open spaces, almost like what you played in, right? They're the third best running team in the country. Right. And, and I think, you know, Kiffin, I would think of him as creative. Um, I think he's a, a very creative, um, and let me say the offensive coordinators he has, because, you know, but I think they're really created in the way that they they uh, add the run to their pass play. So, um, you know, I definitely think he's super creative. I think that uh, he's definitely – I think he's definitely um, one of the coaches. If I was a young player coming up, I would definitely want to go play for Lane just because, to me, he's like a, uh, you know, like a off version of, of Mike, you know. Mike. That's kind of what I was thinking, yeah. Because of the way he he has fun, he understands that. Um, I think he does a great job of having fun with the media, having fun with the kids, and just being creative. So I think that they can throw. I think they're a pass happy team, but I think they have some creative runs. And I think, um, you know, that's kind of what Lincoln's deal is. Wink's the same yeah. way. He's very creative in space, but he'll do some real creative stuff, and it makes it hard for a defense when you got four guys. Um, that can play and then you're creative on top of that so I tell guys all the time you know I just went to the, the state games this week and everyone loves to talk about um you know air raid and throw the ball and, you know I just got to remind people you know they're always like man 
I love watching y'all play. Y'all threw the vert so easy, man. I think we're going to do it too. You know, I just got to remind people, everybody was 6'6 six, six and above. We had Graham mm-hmm. Harrell, Michael Crabtree, Danny Amendola, Eric Morris, Detron Lewis. So unless you got those cats laying around at the high school level, it can be done, but just don't get confused with, you know, watching watching those guys and thinking it's like that. Well, it's also one of those things too, where it's like, it's like, yeah, you can do it on Madden without those guys. But we're talking about video games here. Like, this, these are real kids putting them in a position where it's like they're doing something they've never been asked to do in a system right. that, in its essence, as you mentioned previous times on this podcast, it's simple in its oh, essence. Oh, Miss Billy. Miss Billy. He got it. He understands. See, he's right there with me. Um, when it comes down to it, it's simplistic, but like, that's not really what it is. There's so many like, you know, small things. Like there was somebody when we were talking about it on the last podcast, how we got a little bit in depth on how you have to read the hips, look at the feet it, where are they looking at? Because I can tell you multiple things. And if your quarterback doesn't pick up on that stuff too, because you could be running, Hey, if his eyes are looking in the backfield, I'm gone. Right. But if mm-hmm. his hips are pointed this direction and then he's looking in the backfield, I can't really go. Right. Because he, right. he, he's limiting coverage to the outside. And obviously I want to get on the outside so I can use that sideline to just go as fast as I can, because obviously you can't push me out of bounds. Right. So it's that kind of thing. So I, I think that that's what just fascinates me with Lane Kiffin is that he has guys like you're talking about, because let's face it, he's in the SEC. You're going to have those guys everywhere. That's just what it is. Right. right. But how he uses those guys and how they have bought in to being a run first team, I think is very indicative of not first and foremost, got to give credit to the players because they're the ones out there that had to have that mental buy-in and mental buy-in is bigger than people give it credit for. But you Mm -hmm. also have to give a bunch of credit to the coaches for evaluating talent, not only on the field, but off the field, knowing that, Hey, this kid will buy in if we do this, this, and this, right? Cause let's face it. The guy that everybody needs to know about on this Ole Miss offense is Listen, Jackson Dart is really good. Don't get me wrong. He's a solid quarterback. But let's face it, the best guy on this team by far is Quinshawn Jenkins. He's a stud. I mean, you, I think he's a top five running back in the country. Uh, 1,400 yards. I mean, he's a stud. And the crazy part is, is they've got another guy, if you remember, in Zach Evans, who transferred from TCU, who was a five-star recruit, who transferred out there. So it's just a one-two punch. You think Texas Tech has a good one, and they do. But this is like that next level right now. I'm curious to see how the defense matches up because you're this is really the big question I have, Lyle, because if you're Tim DeRuder, you're going out and you're thinking, okay, I've got, you know, I got to worry about the run first and foremost. That's what he should be worrying about because Mm -hmm. it's Quinshawn Jenkins. He's stuck. Um, How do you limit those big plays? Because you're probably going to have a guy down in the box right one more guy in the box to try and limit that big you know gain on the run game how do you do that with all these weapons that old miss has on the outside that texas tech has got some really good corners don't get me wrong but old miss has got some really good wide receivers too no doubt I, and and i love seeing the, the big 12 sec <clears throat> matchups because they're so different you know the sec's mindset is a run first conference so you know when we talk about how we get those guys to buy in. I think it's because it's a, a Lane Kiffin, because it's a Lane Kiffin uh, offense, as well as a SEC. Okay. Um, not right now, buddy. What? SEC uh, <laughs> offense that uh, you can, uh, that you can, they run first. And in the Big 12, it's a pass first. So I think a lot of the times, um, you know, they have trouble stopping our pass game. We have trouble sure. stopping their run game because, you know, that's the thing we talk about. Kit Lee and those guys not having the recruits that they want. Um, it's the same with the 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 SEC. They recruit guys so they can run the ball. We recruit guys that can throw the ball. We recruit guys that cover, and they do too. But if, if it's an emphasis on, hey, we're going to get a top running back or a top receiver or a top lineman or a top quarterback, it's it's different um, what they're looking for on top. So I love to see the matchups because it's so different on what the conferences play. So they're going to go for teams that run it 50 times a game to play in Tech who throws it 50 times a game. So Exactly. And we're going to go from teams that run it 20 times a game to they may run it 40 times a game. So I think it's, uh, you know what I'm saying, we're not built 
we're, we're built to stop anything, but we're going to, we want to get DBs. We want to get guys because that's what we're going to face. So I love to see these matchups because it's, it's putting people on the island and it's making people kind of um, play. I don't want to say play more than what they do, but those guys, those linebackers, those D line, they're going to have a lot more opportunities to tackle in the run game than they do. But they're also probably going to go against some bigger dudes that are built um, for the run game. Of course, yes. they could pass block, but they're built for that. And so I love to see that, you know, when we played Ole Miss, it was, it was different um, in different areas. And, you know, when I see the cornerbacks, you know, I, I think Big 12 had better cornerbacks when I was there, you know, although they did have some studs. But you get to that D line and those linebackers, there's different. some six four guys moving, <laughs> moving very fast that I tried to avoid. So um, I think it's definitely going to be flipped. And, and I think it's um, – it's just about what team can can handle adversity because, like I said, Tech's going to move the ball fast, and I don't think Ole Miss is accustomed to teams going out there going. Choo, 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 choo. But yeah. once again, well, there's only team. one team that did it, and that was obviously Mike's team, yeah. right, Coach Leach, right. That was and, it. And like I said, they're pretty successful, but it comes again to are we executing? You know, if we don't get a first down. It's three and out, and they're getting the ball back. They're going to chew some time off that clock. But for sure, uh, I think that's what makes that offense hard, though. They can also score in one play. So I, um, that's the thing that, like, when I when I watch some of their games, and obviously I'm not saying I went back and watched every play that Ole Miss had because let's face it, I ain't got time for that. There's only a few <laughs> people that do. Um, but the thing that stood out to me was how they use Jackson Dart. Right. Like, so the thing is about Jackson Dart, and for those that don't know, Jackson Dart from Southern California, USC transfer into Ole Miss. He's a guy that I think this year, because of this run game, he and this is not a diss. Okay, even if you look at my Twitter, it might sound like a diss. I promise you it's not a diss when I compare Jackson Dart to this guy. He reminds me of Ryan Tannehill. And the reason being is this is the run game is so but it's the priority. At Ole Miss, right? Like you can have this open space, but the run game is the priority. Jenkins or Judkins, excuse me, is the priority, right? Evans is the priority. The thing that they ask Jackson Dart to do, and this is what I'm very interested to see from the tech secondary, is how do they react to this play action pass type stuff? Because they're solid at it. They don't use it a lot, but they do use it. And also, how do they react to using a guy like Judkins in the passing game, Evans in the passing game, because when you think about the Big 12, you know, there's only about three guys that I think of. I'm like, okay, in the backfield, I have to worry about that guy going in motion potentially and running an actual wide receiver caliber route, right? Because most of these running backs, you know, hey, they can run a route, but let's face it, they're not running a, a route tree, right? They're B. John Robinson, guy I think of right away who should be a first round NFL draft pick. He can do anything you want at the running back position, right? A um, couple guys at Oklahoma. But I, I think that that's the most interesting part for me is how Texas Tech defensively kind of plays the chess game against Lane Kiffin. Because Lane Kiffin, he can get in your head a little bit where he's kind of yeah. like, well, you know what I'm really good at. I'm really good at passing the ball. By the way, Judkins and uh, Evans, here's 50 carries, you know, combined, right? Like, he can do that kind of thing. And I wonder also, too, from the Texas Tech standpoint, defensively, as we transition um, here in just a second to the offense for Texas Tech, um, what is it like without Reggie Pearson, right? Like, that's going to be a big deal. Remember, he's in the portal. You got Kobe Minor, But I will remind Tech fans as well, um, the NCAA did pass a rule for freshmen um, or anyone, really, to keep their red shirt. They can play in the bowl game even if they had played four games, which is the max. So oh. don't be don't be surprised if you see a guy like Ty Canna, who I think could be as potentially starting um, linebacker next season for Texas Tech with Kosai and obviously Kershaw leaving. So I think you could see him. I think you could see some other guys that maybe you haven't seen a lot of this year in the secondary because you want to get those young guys the mindset of, hey, this is what we're working towards. We want to be back here, but at a bigger bowl game. Um later on but on the offensive side Lyle and obviously you know much more about this than I do um what do you think Texas Tech needs to do against those guys that again you talk about it and I think it's just the nature of the SEC that they're going to have big dudes and Texas Tech has big dudes 
but Ole Miss is going to have more of those big dudes in waves, right? Like that's the big thing. So how does Texas Tech kind of maybe uh, mitigate that to an extent in terms of the advantage for Ole Miss? Uh, I think it's it's just executing those 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 checkdowns. You know, um, you know we we know we like to go for those big plays. We like to. I think really in this case, it's it's being able to run the ball, and when I mean run the ball just being positive yards. If you can get two to three yards on the run, cool. If, if it's not downfield, let's check it down because they're going to be fast. Um, <clears throat> they're going to – I don't want to say faster, but, you know, last time we played them, they were – I felt like they were faster than teams that we had played. And so I think just being able to check down and, and not forcing it um, and then making those quick decisions because, like I said, we're playing D linemen that are probably going to be a little better than what we've come across. Probably not all year, uh, but a lot of teams we play. So I think it's just if it's not there, check it down. You know, we've had struggles with our old line. We've had struggles with our receivers. So um, yeah, definitely that old line. I think Kit's going to have, definitely have to have some ways to dump it out, have some extra protection back there, and kind of figure out um, what we need to do. And then you know, with our option quarterback stuff. It's great, but those linebackers probably are moving a little faster. So um, just kind of seeing what works and what doesn't work. But I think for the most part, it's just being able to get it out quick, um, being able to run for just the positive yards. We cannot run for negative yards. And I think a lot of that's on running backs trying to do too much. You know, if you got a hole, hit that hole. Try to get yep. get your shoulders, head down, get those two yards. But if we're, if we're running, you know, east to west, it's going to be a no-go. We got to be going north to south every time we run. Yeah, I think that the biggest position I'm watching for in this game for Texas Tech is the tight ends because you've had those offensive line issues, and they've played better as the season ended. But I think you're going to see, you know, um, a lot of chip blocks into the offensive line. Make sure that they're going towards the interior and not going around to the outside because that's where Texas Tech has struggled a lot is at the tackle position. And Joey McGuire mentioned it earlier today at his press conference for National Signing Day. Don't be surprised if Caleb Rogers moves inside for this game, right? And I think Caleb Rogers is tremendously talented, obviously the starting left tackle for Texas Tech for most of the season. Um, but I, I'm not sure he's a left tackle. And that's not a diss on him. I think he is a power five caliber offensive lineman. I just don't know if he's an offensive, uh, uh, offensive tackle. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I wouldn't be surprised if he moves in. Um, a little bit, but I think that that's what we're going to see a lot. Don't be surprised if you see Henry Teeter just out there quite a bit on the side, whichever side Ole Miss shows early that they're going to pinpoint, like whether that's Caleb Rogers, whether they're going after uh, Monroe Mills on the other side, whoever it is, whoever's struggling the most between the tackles for Texas Tech. Don't be surprised if early on you see an adjustment by Kitley and you see Henry Teeter or Mason Tharp right there where they're just going to, you know, do a chip block in and then run out to the flat. And that way they're the security throw just in case nothing's open. And you're still getting, you know, two or three, maybe four yards and they can break a tackle and get more. But at least you're having a potentially positive play instead of a sack for minus nine yards or something like that. Like, I, I think that that's what we're going to see a lot of from Texas Tech, just trying to collapse that defensive line for Ole Miss to right in front of Tyler Shuck because we know Tyler Shuck can get out and move a little bit, and he's actually pretty dang good at it too, moving out. So I, I think that that's what we're going to see, a lot of utilization from the tight end. Um, not necessarily, oh, they're going to have the biggest games receiving, but I think they're going to be more impactful in the blocking aspect of it, both in the run and the pass game. No, I, d I definitely agree, and I think another – you know, key point is just how how do they handle it? Um, mm -hmm. Bowl games are are really cool. You get a lot of things for those who've never. Um, I think I've talked about this on the pod before, but for those who don't know, um, you get different perks. <clears throat> you know, driving to the game. If if you live in Lubbock, you drive to Houston. You get paid per mileage. So you know, as a as a young kid, I mean, they got and you, you should have been driving everywhere, man. Oh, I sure did, brother. But these kids are spoiled, so they probably don't need money with their NIL deals. And all that stuff, <laughs> I, I I get the jealousy aspect of it, but like also good for you guys. Good for you guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean? No, I'm happy for it, but you know, just driving down there, getting gifts. You know, you usually get to, you know, I'm sure they'll probably get to go to a Rockets game or something yeah. along those lines. You usually get to do something really fun. Uh, depending on the bowl, you know, get different gifts. So for for um, athletes, we we love to go to those bowl games. They're gonna 
um, give us the best gifts. I mean, you know, we've gotten TVs, Xboxes, Playstations. Um, so those are cool for those kids. So um, I think the biggest thing, though, for those kids is understanding when to turn it off and on. You know, you get three days. You know, I, I probably shouldn't tell everybody, but you get three days to go out. So they'll get there Sunday, let them go out till Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They reel it back in and kind of get ready for that game. So I think the biggest thing is just being able to turn it on and then off uh, for the game and understanding, you know, it's on TV. It's a big game. It's it's the last game of the season. People have different goals. and um, You're missing some of your guys that aren't going to be there. So I think it's just understanding all, it's a lot when you get into that moment. And, you know, I know for me as a senior, I, I sat there and everything was all good and gravy. And then right before the game, I'm like, dang, this might be it for me. Um, yeah. So it's a lot of emotions. I think um, the team that's able to handle it and be mature, like I said, when I was at West Virginia, we played um, Texas A&M. Those dudes broke curfew, few was out. And, you know, so I think it just depends on those, uh, you know, how that team responds, how bad they want to do it. Um, when we played Michigan State, they kicked out Le'Veon Bell, all kind of folks that probably would have helped us win when we beat Michigan State. So um, I think it's just understanding the situation and, and being smart. Some of them dudes are from Houston, you know people, and, and so yeah. just being smart on the whole situation. Yeah, no, I think it's um, it's interesting, too, because, like, for a lot of these guys, I shouldn't say a lot, but quite a few of them, it is a homecoming situation. So um, I'm not sure exactly when Texas Tech is going to travel down there, but let's just say probably it's week, on. Probably a week. Yeah, well, I, I would say it wouldn't shock me again, probably, if they leave Friday. That way they're not traveling on Christmas Eve and Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's a cool deal where – um one of the positives of Texas Tech not going to the cheese bowl was that, Hey, you're going to get to be around your family quite a bit easier for Christmas. And I think that's a big deal. Um, when it's all said and done, I, I think too, just from a strictly game perspective, I'm very interested to see how Texas Tech does look losing some of these guys, right? Mainly Reggie Pearson, um, who, if I had to guess, I'd, guess he ends up at Michigan State that's just a sure guess it sounds like he wants to go back home Detroit kid um you know it, it it makes sense right like when it comes down to it no no hard feelings on that front also I wanted to give a shout out to Donovan Smith U of H good for him man good for him going down there and uh he's going to be the starting quarterback for Houston I had a lot of tech fans upset about that it's like hey just root for his success every game he doesn't play tech there you go yeah. that's all you got to do um but I did want to talk to Texas Tech signed a historic recruiting class. Um, but before we get there, and we'll mention a couple of players that I like and everything, but give me a score prediction for this one, Lyle. Mm. Ole Miss favored by three and a half right now. Ooh, I'm going to go. Over under is 69 and a half. So they're expecting some points. Yeah, I'm definitely going over. I would say 42. 42-31 Ole Miss. Ooh, okay. I don't know if it's going to be that high scoring on that aspect. Like, I don't know if it gets the over. I think I'm going to take it right under, actually. And I'm going to go – I think Texas Tech actually wins the game. Um, 34 – let's go 34-30 Texas Tech. Mm, that's I nice. think Texas Tech wins the game. Um. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just getting caught up in all this momentum um, that this program has right now, whether it's on or off the field. Again, Texas Tech coming in, three-game winning streak, got a new facility being popped up, all this kind of stuff. Like, maybe yeah, I'm getting caught up too much into it. But um, No, they're doing an amazing job, man. And and I can tell you from the insiders, um, they're happy to be in the bowl, but they're pissed off about this cheese it bowl. So, um, they should be. They deserved yeah. it. They earned so, it. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they came out and beat them by 21 either. So, you know, I give my prediction. But like I said, them kids and coaches um, just hung out with the coach a couple of days ago for a while, and they're pissed. So I, to be on the lookout for them to come out and light it up. There we go. Love it. Those are our predictions. And, again, I might go live here on YouTube before the game starts. We'll see. I might be taking a trip down to Houston, though. You going to the Houston? I might be. I might be going to the game. I haven't decided yet. We'll see what the boys want to do. I don't and know if you want to go, brother. I'll be in contact with some people to see uh, 
who's all down there and if we can get a ticket situation set up or whatnot. Who knows at this point? Um, but again, either way, regardless of how this game goes, it doesn't matter. And he gets it too. This is a positive yeah. season for Texas Tech. It doesn't matter, um, in my opinion. Uh, by the way, for those watching on YouTube, I – I don't know the last time I've been this jealous of someone on a podcast, Lyle, and it's not of you. You're cool. But of your son, he had a donut right in the middle of this podcast. And I'm I, beyond jealous. I've had a piece of bread that we yeah, had last donut. night. That's the worst part. Oh, it's yours. Now it's I'm gone. even now I'm even happier for him. Yeah, I hurt my soul. That's true fatherhood right there. Yeah. For those who don't have kids, don't do it. <laughs> Lyle and I were just talking about that before. <laughs> my my fiance and I would take the dogs out together now. And Lyle was like, well, if you have kids, it's just going to be you, brother. And I was like, I'll come, well, I'll, I'll come drop them off. By that point. I'll come drop them off for three days for you. Let you experience Nah, we got We all right. We all right. We all right. Nah, we good. We good. Our friends can have kids for right now. We all right. We all right, man. The two you dogs are enough it. for me. Two dogs are enough for me, but Texas Tech recruiting wise, they landed a top 25 class. That's cool. That's what I wanted to say on that front. Be sure to go listen to the previous video on the channel. I talked about that. Some of the guys that really stand out to me. Um, I mean, Lyle, you know this from following the recruiting stuff as well. Joey McGuire wants the fastest kids he can get. And yeah. he got the fastest kids he could get um, in this recruiting class. So I'm really excited to see how this works out, mainly on the defensive side. Because they got some kids that are just tr legitimate track stars um, right. at the linebacker position. You don't hear about about that where you got guys that are six foot, two fifteen. You know, winning state hurdles. Yeah, yeah. You don't hear about that stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. But Lyle, tell the people where they can uh, follow you, my guy. Hey, follow me at Coach L L E O N G. And you can follow my main man at. RCMB 323. And before we get out of here, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's tuned in so far. We're inching closer to that 1500 goal, Lyle. Um, thank you. But this has been a crazy football season of growth for us. I think we literally started the football season out with 200 subscribers. So thank you. Almost 1200 um, new subscribers. So um, we really both appreciate it. Um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you celebrate. I hope it's a good one with you and your family. For Lyle, I am RC. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to the Back to 12 podcast. And if you're going down to Houston, you got to do two things for me. Stay safe mm -hmm. and wreck them tech.